In this series, I'm going to focus on games that come out of the roguelike or roguelike genre. With over a thousand games on Steam tagged as one of those two, there's really not going to be a shortage of things to try out. I'm not always looking to play the most popular titles, but I am looking to find some things that people might have missed along the way. There's so many crossovers from other genres, anything is worth trying. Underworld Dungeon refers to itself as a roguelike action adventure where you explore an ancient Greek dungeon hidden in the underworld that pulls inspiration from games like Dark Souls and Terraria. If you weren't looking for this game, I doubt it would have ever popped up under Steam's recommendations tab because it only had four positive reviews and one negative review, which lacks Steam's requirements for a review summary. You wake up on the ground naked, you pick up your starting gear that's scattered around you and start killing things immediately. When you die, you die. There's nothing that you take with you and there's no character leveling progression. From the start, you choose one of three classes. Don't overthink this, just pick one and try it out. On the first playthrough, you're lucky enough to have runes etched in the ground that give you as a player a simple tutorial. I cannot tell you how much I appreciate this after playing a couple games recently that lack guidance whatsoever. The tutorial does a good job of explaining the basics of inventory management, your hotbar, attacks and dodges, and the crafting system. The dungeon you first start in is randomly created from a handful of biome sets laid out in a 5x5 grid. Your goal is to kill mobs, collect loot, and upgrade your items in effort to find the key that leads to the next boss. You have a melee attack, a block if you have a shield, and a dash or a teleport depending on the character that you select. The crafting system panel shows you which items you need to collect to create or upgrade items throughout the game. Each of the floors has its own boss and boss arena, with mechanics of each being simple enough to present a challenge if you're not prepared. After defeating the third and final boss for the first time, you're brought back to the title screen and presented with the fourth playable class. The pros for this game. The sound and art style are fantastic. The developers had a vision of what they wanted and they executed it very well. The movement and the dodging is snappy and responsive, which is usually a deal breaker for these type of games for me. There's a good feeling of progression. Upgrades feel like upgrades. When you die, it's not a rage fest. You know that you'll catch back up a little differently and each death is a learning experience. This game also benefits from good randomization where others don't. Even though the tiles may be recycled, there's a good amount of variation and the drops and merchants and trades that you find along the way are randomized enough to make it feel like a unique playthrough each time. Now for the cons. Unfortunately, the biggest drawback for this game is its unintuitive inventory management. Alt click, control click, left click and drag, you have to remember what does what, and it took a while for me to catch on. Items are also auto pickup, which means that sometimes you'll need to open your inventory and drop an item to pick up a healing item in order to stay alive. And then on top of that, having to remember whether alt click, control click, right click, left click actually puts the item on your bar. That adds another layer of difficulty. I can understand the Dark Souls inspirations because of the punishing attacks the big mobs pull off, but with a lack of variety of attacks, each creature you come across eventually becomes trivialized once you memorize what it does. My overall opinion though, is pretty good. For the two hours I spent with it, I no doubt got my money's worth. At first glance, this game could easily be written off as a generic dungeon crawler, but after playing it, I'm really happy I ended up picking it up. The art and the sound really steal the show here, and its simplistic crafting system gave you a little bit more depth than you were expecting for this sort of thing. For anybody that's interested in an ambient dungeon crawler, I think this is going to be for you. If you're looking for infinite replayability, I don't think you're going to get it here. What I do think you'll get is something that you could pick up when you're looking for 15 to 30 minutes to kill and you want a quick dungeon dive. I would definitely put this under the category as being worth its value at full price and a 100% recommendation on sale. Curse of the Dead Gods is an early access procedural death labyrinth that puts a welcomed and refreshing Aztecish vibe on blood sacrifices and voodoo demons on a style of game that's usually pretty saturated with the stereotypical dungeon tile sets. I'm not going to go too far down the rabbit hole with specific game functionality at this point. It is an early access game. Already in the first two weeks of playing it, there's been some significant overhauls that would have outdated most of my impressions from two weeks ago. Instead, I'm going to talk about some core concepts, how the game loop feels, and how it seems to be evolving, along with the themes that I've experienced so far, paired with some of the systems that I don't think are going anywhere anytime soon. The oversimplified version of Curse of the Dead Gods is a dodge and parry heavy Souls-like roguelike. Each run does reward you with some optional upgrades down the road. When you die, you lose your items and your money, but you retain one resource exclusively used for upgrades that come in a form of retainable buffs and rerolls that I'll get into shortly. There's also a heavy light and dark mechanic that can completely affect your playstyle. 
There's braziers set around the environment for you to illuminate portions of the room with, mobs to set on fire, weapons that benefit combat in certain lighting situations, traps that are invisible in the dark, and a torch that's part of your default kit that is mostly reliable due to curses. On that note, curses. There's a lot of them. There's an entire corruption system that acts as a soft and rage timer. Each time you get hit or move into a new room in the temple, you're rewarded with a dose of corruption. There's a good deal of ways to get corruption and a lot less ways to remove it. I'll let you dig into those yourself as this game continues to grow as I'm sure they'll change. After maxing out your corruption bar, you're assigned a pretty lovely curse and for the most part, they're negative mixed with a little bit of positive. When you cap out at five curses, that one just sucks. Your life force is drawn out of you and it kills you over time. You don't want that. After defeating the boss though, you can remove one of the curses to buy back some time. There's a decent amount of choices in this game too that affect the playthrough. And they're pretty impactful for the experience as well. Before you even walk into the dungeon, you're presented with a map that allows you to see certain parts that are pathed in front of you so that you can start to figure out what you want to do in your delve and how you want to make your advancements. There are different shrines on the map that are guaranteed to be there, but those shrines are where the randomness comes into play. You may be working towards a shrine that offers a weapon, but when you get there, you have no clue what weapons will be available. At each shrine, you can pay gold, or sacrifice blood or corruption, and this is where you actually can use some of those permanently upgradable rerolls that I mentioned earlier to completely reset the presented options available. You keep plugging away using the formula of pick a room, fight some mobs, get some loot, get corruption, get cursed, pick a room, fight mobs, get gold, get corruption, get a curse. Finally, you fight a boss. Hopefully, you didn't pick up enough corruption or curses to get the fifth dreadful curse, because if you did, it's not going to go well. Hopefully you defeat the first boss, and at that point you start all over again, but now you get the chance to go a little bit further. This seems to be the long play loop. You start on a small expedition with one boss, then you get a medium with two. You get the picture from there. So far I'm stuck on the second boss, but I'm still having a heck of a lot of fun. There's also some alternative playstyle modifiers that can change up the rule sets if you're crazy. Time for the pros. This is already getting lengthy so I'll make it quick. Art sound, gamepad controls, mouse controls, keyboard controls, and all movement. Thumbs up across the board. The biggest differentiating factor for this game more than any other is the amount of choice that you actually get. The RNG in Curse of the Dead Gods swings much less wildly than many other games in this genre. There's still a massive amount of RNG, don't get me wrong. It makes each playthrough completely unique and that's a good thing. It's not just a you got bad luck this time sorry kind of game. For a game that wants to be difficult, it does a really good job balancing the randomness. For the cons, and I have to stretch a little bit for this, but with an emphasis on lighting effects, the game really comes in two distinct color palettes, dark blue and gray, or slightly lit orange radiuses surrounded by dark blue and gray. It's a beautiful art style, but with the tile sets being limited right now, once you see one dungeon, you kind of seen them all. Layout does change a little bit, and the variation is relatively cookie cutter. When you get thrown into a room that's a little bit different, it's kind of refreshing, but for the most part, they're all built and laid out the same way. It's less about the room design though, and more about the combat as a game. Each room feels like an arena fight, which might turn some people off. Not me though. My overall opinion though is pretty overwhelmingly positive. Curse of the Dead Gods is very difficult for me to put down. Taking enough time to actually put words down on papers so that I could read them for this, it's pretty difficult because I still want to continue to play the game. At this point, I'm actually considering it to be my main game. I would not recommend this game though for anybody that's prone to throwing controllers at things or rage quitting. Once you die the 12th time to the same boss or get hit too many times and your corruption meter fills up giving you another curse, it can be rage inducing. I recommend this game for anybody who likes skill based parry and dodge heavy games. This may not be Dark Souls punishing with one shot kills flying at you left and right but it does come with a very taxing corruption mechanic that's hard to undo when you get too far behind. Would I recommend this game in the current early access form? Yes, 100%, and I would have recommended it two weeks ago too. Do I feel like I got my money's worth? Yeah, also 100%, and I'm incredibly excited to see what else is coming down the road in development for this in the future. If there's games out there that you feel got mixed or negative reviews on Steam for no reason, let me know, I'd be more than happy to try them out. Like I said, I'm not just interested in playing the most popular games, I'm okay with going through the trash. 